What's up guys and welcome back to the Yard G2A Festival here on the Yard Fest channel. This is going to be a best of three, the third place match between Moscow 5 and Basically Unknown. I'm Michael Lars, going to be joined by Danny for this best of three. I think in order to keep hype levels up, it's probably best if we think about this as its own separate tournament and not as like a subsection of another one. I think it is better to keep it that way, Mike. But uh, this is probably going to be a really exciting series, both these teams. I'm expecting a lot of aggression, but we have to expect that from the patch. We've seen a lot of teams, or on occasion, some teams, finishing games in 13 minutes. So I'm hoping we see a lot of action. I hope nobody takes, takes a step back and just says, let's farm. It shouldn't happen anyway, but hey, who knows? The game that you're talking about was oh, Moscow yesterday. 5. <laughs> <laughs> they just got cleaned up yesterday by, I believe, uh, London Conspiracy in 13 minutes. So, Radiant yeah, team. I hope that doesn't happen because no one actually enjoys Dying that except team. London Conspiracy and all relevant people betters. people that maybe bet them, yeah. That's not good. <laughs> like That's not good. 13 minutes is actually... 20 minutes too soon. It is. In comparison, so let's do a little, little bit of math here. In comparison, would basically Unknown be on the same level as London Conspiracy, or do you think they're more towards the Moscow 5 level, uh, team-wise? I would say the ranking from bottom to top would be M5, BU, LC. But BU and LC, like, the gap there isn't really that high. Like, with Relax, which basically Unknown just picked up, who actually did just come from London Conspiracy, uh, they seem to be a lot stronger, but uh, they haven't had that many games with him, so it is hard to get a gauge on how strong basically Unknown are with their new full lineup. So. Yeah, it is possible that BU are a lot better than the Conspiracy, but they just haven't played enough games to actually remain. reveal that. But aside from that, we have a draft going on. BU going to grab Five two Lightning remain. Heroes right off the bat. So anti-flying types galore was Moscow 5, Queen of Pain, Result. and Undying as their opening. God, there's so much aggression. There's actually a lot of push potential as well, more so for basically unknown, but we're going to see a lot of early team fight. Moscow 5, they have what I would say the stronger team fight just because they've got a Queen of Pain there for the AoE to really blow someone up. Then you have the Undying there with the Tombstone as well as the Decay spam to really control basically unknown. I don't think... Oh, Diabolic Edict is going to be annoying because that actually is going to kill the zombies, surprisingly enough, so... Mm -hmm. The Lash Rack pickup, very interesting as a first hero pickup. I have seen teams picking him up picking him up a bit more frequently during the first phase, but do you think that the Lash Rack is really worth this first pick, or is it just just uh, to snag him up in case he gets banned? It's probably the latter. Like after the patch was like a week old, people realized that Lash Rack, though strong, isn't really first pick strong. Like you could usually Five pick him up remaining. third or fourth. And I mean unless you just very clearly indicate that you want to go for pushing, in which case he's going to get banned out. But if you just, you know, play cool, then you could usually get your Lashrak later. Disruptor, Ancient Apparition, these are a lot of range heroes, at least, for basically unknown, and they're looking towards lane control primarily for uh, this early stage. The problem I see is that Lashrak right now is going to have to go to the mid lane. Usually you want to have some flexibility, like have Radiant some sort of setup so that Lashrak can, you know, maybe be a surprise mid laner, maybe go into a side lane as a dual lane, but... Lashrak, Disrupt Range Apparition, the setup really isn't there. You, I guess you could glimpse into Split Earth, but you would have to have the right uh, situation to actually have that done. And with basically Unknown having a majority magic damage, Moscow 5's Viper pick, ordinarily you wouldn't see a third, but this is a really good counter pick. Already three heroes of BU. And B and BU, they're also very squishy, so team, for them to team fight, they have to be sure that they don't all Five get caught in remaining. the spells, the AoE that Moscow 5 is going to be throwing at them. So even though basically Unknown has a lot of nuking potential themselves, they have to be very careful with positioning because, as you mentioned, they're all ranged heroes. They can't tank up any sort of damage. So I'm interested to see what basically Unknown is going to pick up as their last two heroes, if they're going to pick up any sort of frontliners, or if they're going to keep on going with this ranged draft, which I highly doubt. I'm expecting some sort of tank for the team to actually have someone absorb the damage from Moscow 5. And probably... A reliable disable because again basically unknown the only source of real disable is the split earth disruptor he doesn't really have his own and ancient apparition the, the cold feet is unreliable moscow 5 they have way they have heroes that are going to be mobile in the fight oh god this pugna pick is going to be painful to watch yeah the you are almost completely reliant on their spells right now so 
that nether ward if it's gonna stay alive is gonna really destroy the bu side and Moscow 5 they have gotten themselves to a very aggressive strategy with the pugna Ten now picked up remaining. they'll be able to uh go in and actually take some towers so you know capitalize on their Ten aggression hopefully win a team fight for them then just steam roll forward uh for Moscow 5 i think their hand is forced into a drow ranger ban right now simply because that would be too ridiculous Dyer if you were allowed to pick it up but razor is going to be that tankier hero on the front lines for bu you know pretty good synergy with the ancient apparition another lightning hero there we go although they could they <laughs> oh, can't could also see grab zeus. an axe <laughs> zeus? i'm kidding i was hoping zeus to just finish up the lightning combination but <laughs> Or actually, it would be finish off the blue team as well. If you take a look at basically unknown, everybody oh, yeah. is blue. Yeah. Synergy, flavor points. Synergy. There. But you are already <laughs> winning, points. guys. <laughs> oh my goodness. So Ogre Magi and Tidehunter Band coming up from both sides. Tidehunter would have actually been okay Ten if basically Unknown wanted to pick that up. Again, another tanky frontline hero, and it would have given them some crowd Five control. Because if you look at Moscow 5's draft as well, they hardly have any sort... They actually don't have any sort of disable in terms time. of stunts. They've got a lot of slows, but nothing to really lock down those heroes. Do you think this is going to be a problem for Moscow 5, or do you think the nuking potential pretty much... Counter, but counters out the lack of disables. I think in this game, unlike a lot of others, it's not really going to be a huge problem. If they get into a fight, it's going to be to the death, and that's completely fine for them. BU are more on the softer side. So if Moscow 5 you know, are going to be chasing people down, I mean, yeah, people will be able to TP out from BU. That's going to be an inconvenience, but uh, they have a lot of burst, and they have a lot of just stand-and-fight type heroes that they could probably get away with this. And if you look at BU... They have Split Earth Ten as their stun, I guess remaining. Glimpse you can kind of count as pseudo CC, but yeah, they don't really have many great ways five of locking down the Moscow remaining. 5 side either. And this is up against a Queen of Pain. Disruptor is going to have to be on point, as is the Lestrak and Clockwork, if they're actually going to kill her off convincingly for basically unknown. Clockwork is the last pick, I think it's a pretty safe one. Also, you know, Axe, Centaur probably would have been decent pickups for them, but BU, they are working with a very weird draft. Unfortunately, not all blue, so they're no longer yeah. winning the game. Uh, that may be a little bit sad, but things are going to happen. Witch Doctor final pickup from Moscow 5. They finally have a little bit of disable, and so Slander's going to be handling that Witch Doctor. Witch Doctor this game, do you think there's a reason why they picked up a Witch Doctor, aside from any other support, or... Usually I just... would say you're going for this whole team fight kind of thing, and you're going to want to push. But this is a Witch Doctor pick into Ancient Apparition, and that is potentially going to be really bad. I guess you just go for Maledict, and you're okay with that, because Maledict is usually a pretty good skill. But, uh, yeah, Witch Doctor has a stun, I suppose, and that's good enough for them. For battle. I guess that might be the only reason. I guess the teamfight Death Ward is going to be useful as well. So not, not a lot of supports that are favorable in the patch have massive ultimates was lion band and and lena and everything I don't like think that they were touched actually Usually i, I lion have is a feeling better. i thought lion would have actually been picked up the double disables as well as a massive ultimate to work with in the team fights but hmm wish doctor instead very interesting maybe it could be just for the the death ward to zone out the enemy who knows I don't know, in our kind of short on CC, we already went over that, so having mm. another tool that forces the CC out is pretty useful. But uh, guys, we're going to load into game one. Unknown are going to be on the Radiant side. They're going to put Arise on the Lashrak, most likely heading towards mid. Nico Baby is on the Razor. Stominin is on the Disruptor with Relax. The import from London Conspiracy is on the Clockwork that leaves pure evil on the Ancient Apparition. On the side of Moscow 5, playing on the Dire side, we have Axmo handling the Queen of Pain up towards Secret Shop. We've got Bignum on the Undying. Towards mid lane, Limbo is going to be handling our Viper. We have ZXC on our Pugna. And lastly, we've got Slanders, who's going to be playing a Witch Doctor with a very fancy looking mask. Can't really begins. see too well out of that. Probably not. I don't think he can. Do you think the middle part is, like, translucent? Everything's no. yellow, at the very least, for him. <laughs> it, lo it looks like, um... Oh goodness, what is it? The the TI shield. He's wearing the TI shield on his head. <laughs> He's a TI champion, this witch doctor. Confirmed, but alright, let's look at how these lanes are actually going to shape up. Axmo's gonna be on the off lane as the Queen of Pain. Usually not gonna have a fantastic time, but this is a solo Queen of Pain versus a solo clockwork. Cogs are gonna be a nuisance, but that's about it. Queen of Pain should have this lane almost completely on lockdown. 
We might actually see some action. Big, and I'm just going to be there with the decay to actually bring the heroes to low HP. Stone oh. Max, though, he's taking a lot of HP. Oh my god, it's first blood already to Moscow 5. He drops so quickly, Nico Baby. He's actually going to be stealing a lot of uh, damage from Big, Num, but not going to really go for the re engage there because there were two to three. And they're actually going to go for a rotation. TP Nico Baby down bottom, and are they going to bring in the clockwork up top instead? Uh, I doubt they're going to sit with the Clockwork Razor dual lane. I guess, you know, Cogs into Static Link is cute, but not up against the Queen of Pain. So that was a very nice first blood for Moscow 5. Also very lucky. We were just discussing that Witch Doctor, and what you can't count on is a Witch Doctor stun. Hitting the hero once, bouncing to a neutral, and then bouncing back to the hero. So if you could make that happen every single time, then Witch Doctor is actually the best hero in the game. But if not, which is probably not going to happen in the future, then you really need to be careful. Relax. Speaking of careful, dropping very low. Gets cogs and field up. Look at all these barriers. But Moscow 5 not going to chase that one out. There is currently no one on the top lane of Moscow 5. And relax. He has to get up there, but in order to get up there really easily, he has to go to the side shop. And you can't really get to the side shop easily. He's going to have to walk all the way back to base to get the TP. And that's a lot of wasted time. Uh, for the clockwork because it means that he's not getting EXP and he's not getting any farm so essentially Relax is getting the shorter end of the straw unfortunately because they decide to prioritize the razor above the clockwork but hopefully he should do okay up in that top lane um, he will take a lot of uh, nuking damage from ZXC as well as uh, slanders on the witch doctor so he will take a beating, but he should be okay. Bignum, they're caught in the kinetic field. He's going to drop the tombstone, though, and actually Axe, we're going to blink forward and pure evil on a very squishy ancient apparition. Going to go down. Nicky boy, he is actually just going to focus down the tombstone, but what's done is done. They get a kill in that bottom defensive tri lane. I really like this move from Moscow 5. They see the rotation from BU. It was clear as day. And what they do is rotate just the Undying there. Undying is the hero that you want to have up against three heroes if you can manage it. Especially when these heroes on BU are already so soft, a Decay is going to hit them super hard. And if you have the Undying just constantly man-fighting up against BU, then that's a winning scenario. And up towards top, they're not really suffering. Relax is getting poked away by Slander. Cask has already been used. Blast will almost do it. It will. Relax is going to die up towards top and Moscow 5 up to a 3-0 advantage right now. This is the best scenario for them. They are going to eventually get level 5 on this Pugna. In fact, it is coming very shortly. Then the towers are going to start dropping for Unknown. The laney phase really hurt Unknown. The fact that they had to rotate everybody down bottom and have their clockwork waste a little bit of time going back up to the top lane is just essentially turn their laning phase into complete and utter waste of time. You look at their draft and, oh god... And you want to have an advantage with this kind of draft. You want to get those levels, you want to grab those kills, and you want to be ahead because you are going to have the advantage when you have those levels into your skills. Disruptor, he needs points, but he's only got level 2. He's got one point in Kinetic Field, and he's holding on to another one, whether he wants to use a Glimpse or a Thunderstrike. But a level 2 Disruptor is very weak as a support. You want to get more levels than this. Especially when you say level 2 Disruptor, you're going up against a level 2 Undying in a man fight. Go ahead. See what you can do. He won't be able to do that much. Undying is going to win every single time. So, you know, that's a good situation for Moscow 5 to be in. The bad situation that they're in right now is that they're getting outlast hit. Nico Baby is having a pretty free time on this Razor. Yeah, Pugna's getting free farm, and he's going to have his Arcane Boots, maybe a little bit of extra sustain uh, earn or something like that. But uh, Limbo's getting slightly outlast hit by Arise, and... Well, this is, uh, you know, at least Unknown are getting this type of advantage. They're getting some CS on some of their heroes, and they'll have some items and levels by the time this push is upcoming for Moscow 5, but now dual lanes for M5, and this top lane, it's a 2v1 versus the Clockwork. He's only level 3, and ZXC is eventually going to take down this tower, and then I think they could even afford to stay up there for a little while longer, wait until this Viper grabs his mech, and then once that is up, then go for that, you know, systematic push around all the lanes. They absolutely can do that, and what can basically un Unknown do at this point? They're going to try and go for a jump onto Bignum, he is isolated, he's going to drop the Tombstone, but he's going to go down anyway. Axmo, does he want to commit to somebody though? Tombstone is already going to go down, and poor Disruptor dropping pretty low himself. Blink is at the ready, and also an Invisibility Rune if necessary. We'll see if he wants to pop it, just going to go for the Blink, he wants to dive onto the Disruptor, Invisibility Rune has been popped, but he goes down anyway, and there's a deny on the Disruptor. Oh, very unfortunate there for the Queen of Pain, getting a little bit too greedy, especially with the invisibility rune. Fade times suck, man. Fade times are the worst. 
And Queen of Pain is going to feel it. Bignum also got really just quite out of position as that undying. So, you know, that undying death probably could have been avoided. Queen of Pain deciding to man up. And, you know, I could always respect a hero making that play, especially when you have so many ways of getting yourself to safety. But this bottom lane not going now as well as Moscow 5 really would have wanted. But these are, again, things that are okay for them. They can absorb these losses and still come back into this game or still stay ahead because they do have a pugna Haste. and uh well they also have a pretty farmed viper over in the mid lane and well they're gonna actually gonna grab a haste rune witch doctor closing in on to relax cogs are going to go up and that will bump zxe back one blast probably would have done the deal if it still lands it still can do the deal but it won't cogs once again being life serious slander probably don't want to eat tower shots at least not that many that was relaxes escape albeit barely but now that the clockwork is wounded enough he Radiant's can't afford to hold this tower up towards attack. top. It will die. Oh, that was a really nice glyph. ZXC went to go for the Pugna Blast, and the glyph just negated all of the damage. Radiant's but tower does go down fallen. anyway, and Clockwork, what can you really do? He's just way too low. So he's going to head back to base. Nice bit of gold going in the way of Moscow 5. That's just going to propel the Viper closer and closer to that mechanism, which is coming very shortly. All right, mechanism is going to be a big pickup for Moscow 5, especially since right now the mechanism... Or let's say mechanism at eight minutes, unless he has it right now. No, okay. Let's say eight mechanism, eight nine minutes. Ancient apparition will be like level four or five tops at that point. There will be a period of time, or there should be a period of time, where Moscow Five have a mech where ancient apparition is not going to have his ultimate. So mech is guaranteed value, and even after that, mech is going to have most likely some value. You can't always expect an ice blast to land. Very difficult skill to connect with. Uh, they are sticking on the top lane for a little while longer with the Witch Doctor, but ZXC has rotated out. Urn Charge is up. Looks like he's going to go for drums as well. Going for a light, little bit of a tankier route as Pugna. Uh, it's pretty much a necessity. And now, with the Pugna on the bottom lane, they'll try to look for an ambush kill. But even if they don't, and they won't because he was spotted, this tower is going to start Radiant's taking a lot of chip. Is under attack. Yeah, I like what they're doing up in the top lane. They're leaving, or well, actually, Slanders was up there to soak up some lane EXP. But just having that free time as a support to get those levels, a fast level 6 on a support, it's really going to help you in those team fights. Because if you look at basically unknown supports, look at their levels. You have a level 4 Ancient Apparition and a Disruptor, so their ultimates are pretty far away. So their teamfight presence is going to be much less known compared to a Witch Doctor who is tailing uh, Nico Baby here on the Razor. And he is going to go for the TP, but Cask will be there. That's going to cancel that. And he's just going to walk away. He's like, ah, oh, I cancelled your TP. <laughs> That's about it. His teammates are nearby, so unfortunately Razor cannot commit to the kill. It's just such a cheeky play. For them, with the, I think Razor was TPing towards the mid lane where they glimpsed back a Viper. Probably would have been a kill, or at least a little bit closer to a kill. Uh, if he was able to get that TP off, but that's what you do as Witch Doctor or as any support here with an Invisor. You are a scout, you are a ward, and you are a nuisance. And the rest of the team was bought enough space with that play to grab the rest of that tier 1 tower. So a lot of extra gold now for Moscow. Five mechanism on the Viper. Actually, no parts to it. Looks like the TP out really costed that Viper, but sooner or later it will be up. Probably looking at 10, 11 minutes now at this point. But the Sonic Wave is up on the Queen of Pain and Unknown. Their levels on their supports. They're not really coming up as quickly as Moscow 5. Slander pushing level 6 right now, whereas the level 4s on Ancient Apparition and Disruptor matching the Undying, I suppose. But Static Storm, Ice Blast, these are big teamfight ultimates that Unknown will need to hold these towers. Arizo on the left track, he's not carrying the team, but he is holding most of the net worth for the team, and looks like they're going to try and commit, but nice two-man hookshot coming up from Relax, but look how quickly he <laughs> lost his HP, just completely obliterated and unknown. They weren't even able to reinforce him at that point, so initiation was good, but the follow-up? Non-existent. Yeah, they uh, uh, at least Relax thought, I think he thought that, hey, Arise is in trouble, I should hookshot and save my Lashrac, and then Lashrac was like, oh, thanks man, I'm gonna leave now, and Relax <laughs> was just left high and dry, so... Uh, miscommunication, perhaps, for the BU side. If you could keep initiating like that, oh, as you said, then that'll be really nice for BU. Unfortunately, that initiation is not gonna come right now, since Clockworks Hookshot Level 1 does have quite the cooldown. 30 seconds will be up, but 30 seconds is all Moscow 5 really need to take down this tower, unless they run out of mana. They have a Mango, they only have one set of Arc Boots, they probably will pick up another on one of these other support heroes, but I think this is about it for Moscow 5. Unknown, they're reinforcing with all of their heroes. 
Moscow 5, they do have a Queen of Pain up on the high ground. Glimpse back onto Limbo, but a Sonic Wave is available right now. Will be held right now for Axmo. He's going to whiff it on a rise, only at Stoneman, and now Axmo is overcommitted. He's going to die to the Lightning as well. Big misplays by this Moscow 5 side. They're going to try to chase down the Disruptor for something, but they don't have enough CC to kill him off either. The greedy plays. Oh, Hookshot going to bring Relax to the Creep Wave. Okay, the uh, neutrals, rather. That was definitely going to be a kill for Moscow 5 if the Queen of Pain made the greedy play, but... She went super greedy and tried to hit everyone. There was a four-man Sonic Wave in there, and she whiffed it. Yeah, he held it for a really long time. Was he holding it for something? He could have thrown it a little bit earlier, but he held it. I got no idea. I have no idea. Like, you either throw it on the four heroes that you can guaranteed hit, or you throw it on the one hero who you will guaranteed hit and kill. And Axmo did neither of those things, so... 4-6 right now in Moscow 5, the Glimpse allowing Unknown to take those types of fights, and those are the type of fights that Unknown really want to take when they have the Clockwork and Razor in the front lines, everyone else behind them, especially that Lestrac just chucking lightning everywhere. Moscow 5, the Queen of Pain would be able to sometimes get in there and stop it, but only if she doesn't misplay. Mm, so we'll see if Axmo plays a little bit safer. Maybe they're getting a little bit complacent because they knew they had that lead. So they thought, okay, we are ahead in levels as well as items. So let's get a little bit greedy. Let's cr try and grab more kills than we actually need. And instead they feed away kills. So unfortunate for M5, for basically unknown, it's okay. Because it means that they're getting their items a little bit sooner than they'd like to. Do we have any big items coming up? We just got boots in our ancient apparition. Very poor man. Relax. He's going for what seems to be a blade mail eventually. Just finishing up his magic wa magic wand. He needs that to, for that little bit of extra sustain. Considering how quickly he can die when he does go for the initiation. But aside from that, there's just nothing. Well, they're going to get wrapped around in the mid lane as well. Moscow 5 still don't have that mechanism up on the Viper. It looks like he's going to go for a pipe instead. I think that's, you know, justifiable. Pipe is not shut down at all by the Ancient Apparition Blast. And it is, I guess, the purpose is very similar. You just pop it, and then you have a lot of extra health through other means. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I could get behind this one if Limbo is actually able to grab it. But so far, not really doing great. The wraparound smoke was spotted by a random flare, or I guess a flare by Relax. Not going to call it random. That was very well planned. And now it might be Moscow 5 to sit in a pincer. Axmo? Looking for a hero that just TP'd out, but Radiance mid lane still tower. taking blast damage. Attack. Maybe a deny? No, not gonna happen. Radiance Ice Blast is coming in, which will land onto ZXZ. If they get any sort of skill onto this Pugna, he will die. Arise Lightning, it will bounce! Oh. And then Pugna will die. Slick plays by Arise. He'll take a Viper Strike, and he will be able to just TP out of there. They will also catch Deku Baby, who's gonna go in for the 1v4. I don't know if I would recommend this. Death Lord being channeled, he will die, the Witch Doctor, but trade himself for the Razor. I don't know what the plan was there, but... Uh, Sure, one for one. If you look at the situation though, he wanted to go for the kill on the Witch Doctor, and last minute, because it's night time, he realized there were too many M5 heroes around anyway, so even if he tried to run away, if he didn't get somebody before the death, it wouldn't have been worth it, so... Even though it looked like a bit of a suicide attempt, he probably knew that he was going to die anyway. So just grabbing the kill on the Witch Doctor, just to kind of nullify the death. Unfortunately, it's not going to patch up all of the, the wounds. Moscow 5, they did take the tower, and now they're going to think about going for these tier 2s. Unfortunately for Moscow 5, they don't really have a great way of killing off Roshan. Like, that would be a great way to just sustain these pushes. Just, you know, if you die, no big deal. Just respawn and keep on going. They don't have any minus armor, and Viper, well, he might die up on this top lane. Relax if he lands a hook shot. Will be a kill, almost guaranteed, but Limbo is you know, pretty well positioned right now. And Glimpse, though nice, it is working with nighttime vision, so... Can't really easily connect with that one either. Seems like Moscow 5 need to wait for their next items before they go for these tier 2s. Mm, so the advantage that Moscow 5 accumulated during the early game has been shut down at this point. Unknown, they're catching up, which is a really good thing considering how hard how hard their lanes were. So they have a chance to come back. They've got all the level 6 ultimates on their support, so that's definitely going to help in their potential next fights. Although Nico Baby down bottom... It might be a bit of a sad situation if he gets caught, though. So who's going to start the initiation? Looks like they're going to start off with ZXZ on the Pugna. He's going to go for the Decrepify. And Nico Baby going to go for the TP. And there's nothing to cancel this. And unfortunately, M5 does not have enough to burst him down, even if they tried. That was a pretty easy escape from the Razor. Even if he just got Decrept immediately, TP would have made it out. Slander was lagging behind. And 
In those situations, you need slander to actually be in the front, like actually in the front as the Witch Doctor, and you never really want that. There's smoke up on unknown side now. They're going to try to fight with fire with a little bit of fire of their own. Clockwork is in the front, Stoneman in right behind him, so whoever gets Hookshot is in for a world of hurt. They're going to run into the Switch Doctor. Ward is going to be placed, but Hookshot in, going to connect onto ZXC. Ice Blast coming in with the uh, Static Storm as well. Goodbye, Pugna. Slander looking for a Death Ward opening right now. Will land it onto Pure Evil. Cast bouncing through as well. Relaxed on TP out, but he won't make it. That's two kills for Moscow 5 in exchange for one. But unfortunately, now they don't really have enough to continue chasing onwards because they already used all their CC. And Unknown are in the meantime pushing in the mid lane with Arise's Edict. This is level 2 and he will grab that one and straight TP out. Bignum, looks like he left, got left behind by the rest of his squad. I don't really know where they went, but now Bignum's going to try to juke it out. You can't juke out a Razor. Not going to happen. Stun being thrown towards Nick Baby. Viper Strike available. But that uh, passive from the Razor can make it really difficult to continue chasing onwards, especially he's just going to turn around with 126 extra damage. He'll slay the Witch Doctor. Now the Viper and Queen of Pain trying to 1v2, and Nick Baby will die there. Stoman, don't move, don't breathe. Maybe they won't find you. But that's still, that's I think, uh, oh, no, okay, now it's definitely trees. favored by Pascal 5. Ice Blast is coming in. ZXC back from the dead as well. So he's going to actually be able to push this tower a little bit, but a bloodbath on this bottom lane, and... I think Moscow 5 probably slight advantage, but very slight. So if, if we took a look at that bit of a juke from the Disruptor in a realistic perspective, did you see those trees? Do you know how skinny they are? You would see a giant raptor hiding behind those trees, but Dota logic. Unfortunate for the Disruptor, if they did not check that small nook, then at least he would have been able to survive and not give too much away considering what they did lose. But luckily for them, they did manage to get a couple of crucial kills. So. Overall, I'll probably say that was even, considering how basically Unknown is a little bit behind Moscow 5. I mean, you've probably seen Jurassic Park. You know how raptors are sneaky? Stominin is just... But this one's on blue! That. This one's doesn't blue! Matter. Doesn't matter, man. Doesn't matter. Raptors, <laughs> oh my they're God. clever. They're clever girls. Well, bottom lane, Jeez. looks like the push is going to continue onwards. Moscow 5 really want this. They have the pipe now completed on Limbo, but now he's going to get hookshot. There are a lot of creeps here, and this hookshot, probably not a great idea with Ice Blast or without it. Stacks going to cancel the Death War, but Relax is definitely going to go down. And Limbo Slander not taking that much either. Glimpse back onto Slander. Limbo now going to get hit with the Edict. That's how you got to kill him off with the physical damage, but here comes the Queen of Pain. Will kill out the Disruptor. Blink forward, looking for a rise. Stun out of the Split Earth, and Bingham's going to close in with the Flesh Golem as well. Axe still taking a lot of damage right now, but... He will commit suicide, let's track rather early, I would say. In the Moscow 5, they don't have anyone else rotating in, so they'll just take a couple of kills over in the mid lane in exchange for their Viper. All things considered, not too bad for them. Not too bad, but it could have been better in all honesty. If Arise managed to get an extra kill there, then they would have essentially won the fight. But the the bloodstone though he got a bloodstone very early and typically what you want to do is you want to build up bloodstone charges but the fact that he died during the team fight it's gonna actually set him back so a little bit unfortunate hopefully he's able to start accumulating bloodstone charges do you think this is the the bloodstone game or would you have liked this picked up a little bit later i think it's probably fine just because mosca 5 have a lot of damage and you need that health source uh, otherwise, for Lashak, like, what, you go for a Yule Scepter, I don't think rushing Octarine Core is anywhere near worth it. Uh, just getting the Soul Booster, in all honesty, is value enough for Arise to seriously consider, because he does need that extra HP. Otherwise, you know, one Queen of Pain combo, and he's just going to die. And speaking of Queen of Pain, she is incoming with an Invis Rune. Was not spotted by any vision from the Unknown side, and it might be relaxed to feel the brunt of this one. Oh, yeah. Poor, poor Relax. Suddenly dead. <laughs> This is a this is a Queen of Pain with a Dagon as well. If you didn't realize, Lishrak able to get the kill on the Undying, but yeah. So Axmo's decided to go for Dagon this game. Do you think this is a justified pickup, or do you think they're feeling a little bit under pressure and they say, we're just going to have to burst these heroes down rather than control them? This is consistent with their draft game plan. Like, if you look at this draft, you would say, okay, Moscow 5, looking to end the game by 30 minutes, and Dagon is an item that you pick up in order to pretty much put the Queen of Pain fully into the early game. You want to play aggressive with this item, and that's what they want to do. The problem I see with that is that all the Tier 2 Towers are still up from Unknown. At this point, all the Tier 2 Towers should be dead or dying, and their Pugna hasn't really been able to push as much as he really would have liked, because Unknown keep on getting these Soul Hero pickoffs. So this Dagon for Queen of Pain, though it's really nice for her to get those types of burst kills, those kills ultimately don't matter unless they're taking Towers afterwards. Mm, and the fact that 
Unknown is actually leading with two heroes in the net worth chart, it's a little bit scary for M5. So we'll see if they can actually manage to get a couple of heroes higher in net worth and get a bit of the lead, which is what they need, considering they have gone for this team fight into push draft, whereas Unknown, they can scale into the late game with their Lash Rack, but I guess the Lash Rack is all they have. Razor's but aside from that, against Ra Razor's not bad, but I've, if you think about it, there's a lot of other heroes that do what Razor does better. Oh yeah, for sure, but like, the right-click damage from Moscow 5, the only hero that the Razor is gonna drain is the Viper, and then he's just a non-factor limbo, so the fact that Razor has a very easy, oh, I'm just gonna drain that guy type of strategy is actually pretty convenient for him. If you're evil though, oh, Sonic Wave, Dagon Blast, rest in peace AA, you don't wanna mess with that Queen of Pain, let me tell you, over towards mid, counter push from Unknown, Plaza Field, gonna land onto Slander, Static Storm gonna catch three, and now Big Num Slander in a lot of trouble, both of them. Pipe not gonna last for long enough. Nico Baby with the BKB chasing down for big number will fall short. Can instead decide to go for Limbo, who decides to get into a man fight. And Courier flying overhead. Nico Baby slow as hell though, and he will try TP out, but he will fail at that. Oh man, a single hit on any of these heroes would have done it, but it just was not enough for unknown Lashrak. Able to get out of there, grabs a couple of Bloodstone charges. Ultimately though, for the Moscow Five side, they kill off the Razor. They take it the tier two. That's a really great fight for them. It was. The Razor should have known that he was actually going to die at the end of that, so if he just turned around and tried to go for a hit onto somebody, then just just patch it up with a kill before you die, then it would have been okay. But he was a little bit too overconfident with the BKB, and that was his first BKB charge as well. BKB on a Razor this early, though, it feels like he's desperate, because an early BKB means that, yes, you are going to be able to fight these fights during the early stages better, but as the game goes late, your BKB will eventually become redundant. And if you look at Moscow 5, they have a lot of things to pierce that BKB as well. So, after the BKB, what do you think is the Razor's plan? Is he going to have to go full tank, or would you suggest that he go for a different route and maybe just go for that damage? I think, as Nico Baby right now, you kind of want to forget the fact that you're playing Razor and just think about yourself Dyer's playing any generic agility carry. Like, that's what he has to do right now. He has to scale into the late game. If that involves Scotty, Sanjin Yasha, Assault Karas, like, it doesn't really matter. Aghanim Scepter would be okay, but I would say, you know, straight up damage is going to be a lot more difficult for Moscow 5 to deal with, but you know, that will be fine as well. Uh, just try to do some damage as this Razor, because tankiness, most of it's going to be solved, or a good portion of it is going to be solved by that BKB, Dyer's but for Moscow 5, they're, they may not even get to see the Razor's next item if they are going to keep going for this push. Dyer's Bottom lane tier 2 can take quite a bit of damage, but the unknown pushing is not too bad either. They have Edict maxed out at this point, and with Razor up towards top, they will have to pause. Unfortunately, Nika Baby is going to have some problems, but this tower should go down on both ends, honestly, so tier 2 tower trades for BU looking pretty good. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. So basically unknown, considering that they are in a bit of a weird spot, they're able to push. So if M5 do not decide to, um, to defend that tower up top and take the bottom tower instead, it's just going to be an even trade. And that's what basically unknown wants. They want them to be even trades so that they can still fight M5 toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Don't get me wrong, you, you look at their draft, you look at their heroes, and they can definitely fight. BKB almost finished up on the Leshrac, which is going to... It's actually done. He's just going to have to pick it up when he goes back to base, but that's huge. This Leshrac, he's got almost nothing to stop him up against M5, and they do have a pipe to counteract some of the damage, but they're still very squishy heroes, aside the Undying and the Viper. So if they're not careful, they could get completely wiped in the next potential fight, because if you look at this, I'm assuming M5 is going to go for the high ground push. They've got everyone here, whereas Unknown, they're starting to disperse. Unfortunately, Moscow 5 don't have the Aegis. They don't quite yet have a BKB completed on ZXC, so it's eh, high ground is what they want, but I don't know if they have enough power outright to do it. If they wait for Aghanim Scepter Slander, BKB on ZXC, uh, probably nothing else is going to be really worth waiting for. BKB on Viper, perhaps, but I mean, he already has the pipe. He's already pretty darn resistant to magical damage. Uh, Moscow 5 then will be able to destroy the pushing from, destroy the structures from basically unknown very, very easily. But at that point, unknown, I mean, I don't know if they're going to have any big items themselves. Blade Mail up on the clockwork, that's a big one. BKB on the Shrack's already up. Moscow 5 might just coincidentally have better item timings than the unknown side. We'll have a jump of power where Unknown are very far away from their jump, 
So that might give Moscow 5 a little bit more time to actually get this pushing going, but we're pushing 23 minutes right now. Moscow 5, they're starting to get a little bit more presence on the map with these, these pushes, but sooner or later they're going to have to grab an Aghanim Scepter and some Life Drain on this Pugna and try to make him a little bit more of a late game threat. And Life Drain is pretty good up against what Unknown have, with the exception being Clockwork, who could immediately interrupt that. Unknown will have to force CC on this Pugna and then Slander, and then it's this whole big problem of them running out of CC. Well, yeah, there's just not enough CC on the side of Unknown. So, like you mentioned, if M5 can get these big items to really force out some of the CC, then it's going to let these other heroes run rampant. So Axmo and the Queen of Pain, you're going to let Bignum run, uh, run around and pretty much do what he needs to do. Limbo is going to be able to run freely. But if Unknown decide to control those heroes instead, then you have to worry about the Pugna as well as Slanders on the Witch Doctor. So, yeah, everything that you said is going to happen. But we'll see first if it's going to happen anytime soon. Up top, we're going to have a tower lost, taken down by basically unknown. Whereas down bottom, M5, they secured their tower. They still see the heroes up top, and are they going to go for the high ground push, though? Nope, there's one TP from the undying, and there's two more. One up top and one towards the mid lane, so must go five. They want to defend what could be a push or the XC. It was going to be jumped on, but unknown playing pretty safe here. Arise as well as Nico Baby, just going to go back. No static link connecting means Razor doesn't have any damage output, so they will fall back. But with a tier 2 trade right now up against a Pugna squad, Unknown should be really happy about that one. A little bit more cash for Lishrak, a little bit more cash for Ancient Apparition, who, if he could somehow grab an Aghanim Scepter, don't know where he's going to find the gold for that, but that will be a huge pickup. Unfortunately for him, he might run into Axmo. No, this Queen of Pain it has a haste rune, so she's going to be running all over the place. She's thinking about going now for Pure Evil, who's spotted... Uh, I think she's going to use a Sonic Wave here. Blink in. Sonic Wave. Dagon Blast. One hit. There it is. Ancient off. Apparition down. Aghanim Scepter looking I'm like a distant dream for the AA. Specialist. No. Well, it's a good thing, though, that you are killing off the Ancient Apparition. Just having the Aghanims is going to really discourage M5 from going into a team fight if they do get caught by that. So... Even though they're committing a big ultimate, it's still a very, very scary hero. Oh, Arai is going to try and go for a solo kill onto Bignum. He's going to actually connect the Earth Spike, but is he going to try and get make a getaway? He's going to run into ZXC and the rest of M5. They're going to come in and Slanders. He doesn't actually have a paralyzing cast because he used it previously. Was it on a creep or was it actually on the Leshrac? I have no idea why he didn't have I think the cast he, there. I think he used it on um, the Golems with Limbo. And having that on cooldown really cost them. They could have gotten a kill. I think he was slightly too far away. Like, it would have been close either way. But yeah, either way, yeah, Cask, I mean, he's using it now to farm. It probably was used to farm, let's be honest. So, yeah, the uh, unknown side, both sides with a real shortage of CC. Nick maybe down towards bottom. Got hit with the full burst combo of Axmo. Razor is the tanky one. He will be able to survive those types of combos. But, uh, man, Queen of Pain still holding on to a lot of bursts right now. And unknown, Stoman and... Where are you going, sir? He is completely spotted, as is the follow-up in Arise. So Moscow 5 can set a trap right now. Tombstone is down, but that's a way too pre premature tombstone. And Big Num, it's a farming tombstone. You gotta get those creeps. <laughs> uh, he actually popped it because he saw Relax pop the hookshot. So he was actually expecting the hookshot to latch onto the Pugna. So uh, even though it was a preemptive tombstone, it was just in case he actually did get jumped on. I didn't even realize that Relax missed the hookshot, so... Okay, <gasps> everything is Mike. more justified now. Mike, I was please, watching the bottom caster. end where two heroes were coming in. I'm not going to stare at a <laughs> clockwork. Jeez. Okay. Oh, well, my goodness. I guess Niku Baby still has problems. This is a great way to uh, have this game to stall out. I love pausing. Well, since we're paused... At least we're going to have some time to look at what could be coming up for both sides. So for the moment, it looks like both supports and Unknown want to go for Aghanim Scepter. Now the problem is that where are they going to find farm for this Ag the Aghanim Scepter? If they don't go for team fights or if they don't survive the team fights, these supports are probably going to be getting these eggs at roughly 40, 45 minutes. More or less, depends on if they manage to survive or die or farm. AA and Disruptor are both really bad support heroes at farming. Like there are some better ones like Enigma comes to mind but yeah for unknown these sport heroes will struggle to get their gold up especially when you have Queen of Pain most of the time on the hunt now with the level 5 Dagon these supports uh well we already saw Ancient Apparition is burstable 100 to 0 Disruptor not going to be that much more difficult for Axmo so yeah those are her targets pretty much all of the time and that's going to mean that they are going to struggle to find their farm in lane 
if they're shown in lane, Axmo is probably just gonna make a beeline towards that lane and look to make a kill happen. And we can see that kind of happening right now. Axmo is already playing super aggressively in the enemy jungle all by himself. Although he does have a smoked up team kind of right around the corner. The rest of the team looking to intercept some farmers mid Stominin. Don't farm this. Well, he sees a Queen of Pain illusion. They should know that's fake. Oh, and he's like, oh, that's fake. There could n be nothing wrong with going for this. Don't go down I don't know there. if they know this, though. Re like, um, he actually circled the jungle for Unknown on their map. So I'm not too sure if they were actually aware of either the smoke or they were just thinking that there could be incoming ganks. But we might see Nico Baby as well as so much in trouble. Oh, they're going to show themselves in lane. But M5, not going to commit for it, though, because there is another hero nearby, which is pure evil on the Ancient Apparition, Nico Baby. I think he knows what's up, and he's just going to pop the plasma field for a little bit of vision and to do some damage to these m5 heroes but no commitment so far both teams just kind of dancing around each other yeah, no oh up vision. top though oh axmo he already uses plank and well it doesn't even matter if he didn't he's gonna get obliterated by the list track that's a wicked six streak going for a rise it's a ton of extra cash slander is gonna try to run away here comes nico baby will land a link but that'll be instantly popped Pipe on Slander, not going to do jack. Way too much damage on the Unknown side. That Witch Doctor didn't stand a chance. Even with physical damage, they probably could have killed him off. That's two kills for Unknown. This was Shrak, very healthy still. They can poke the high ground right now. And with no Queen of Pain, no Witch Doctor, it's going to be really difficult for Moscow 5 to defend this Edict damage. Right now, on to the tower. And ZXC pops BKB, wandering forward. But this Pugna BKB is actually doing nothing. The Ethereal form on the Nether Ward is going to keep it alive for right now. But BKB for that, like... My unknown are going to be completely okay backing off, forcing out the 10 second BKB out from the enemy Pugna. Uh, yeah, I'm not too sure what was up with the BKB. Maybe I was actually thinking he popped the BKB and was potentially going to go for a life drain, but maybe he wasn't expecting that the BKB had not been used by the Razor yet. So, yeah, a bit of a waste there for ZXC, unless it was a misclick. I, I can't, it either that or the fact that he was going to try and go for a life drain. But aside from that, I don't. I don't see the, uh, the reasoning behind the BKB. I guess if you look at it the other way, a 10 second BKB charge for a defense is not too bad. That's pretty much par for the course. Moscow 5 didn't have their two heavy hitters in the Witch Doctor, Queen of Pain, or I guess Slender not quite yet a heavy hitter. In about 300 gold he will be. But yeah, you need those heroes to, stay, to be alive for Moscow 5 if you're going to defend. But because Unknown clean out that Queen of Pain's kill spree, they will also take a lot of damage onto that tier 3 tower up towards top. They are now feeling pretty good to go for a bottom lane tier 1 push. This for Moscow 5 should not be defended. Like, Axmo can try, I suppose. And, well, the fact that Relax is in his base is actually going to make this a little bit more difficult for Unknown to actually execute. But it's still going to be a pretty easy tower for them regardless. Mm. So, Unknown, for what seemed to be a horrible laning stage, suddenly stabilizing and then actually getting ahead of Moscow 5. This is... This is the dream for them. This is what they needed. So they are currently leading in Moscow 5. They're in a weird spot. You look at their items and they itemize for... Axmo itemized to go for these quick pickoffs on very squishy heroes. And currently only two heroes fulfill that need. And it's just the support on Unknown. It's not like any of their cores, which... Cores will be ideal, pure evil. They're going to go down with Dagon. Not even going to commit a Sonic Wave. You've got to feel bad as a support if you can't even force out a ultimate from a Queen of Pain. And this is nice for Moscow 5. That's the whole point of this Dagon build, guys. To get these pickoffs and to get Moscow 5 a lot more momentum for this stage in the game. But it just doesn't seem like they're pushing hard enough right now. They're getting all these kills, and that's really nice and everything like that. But they don't really have any late game follow up. The only hero who I would say is going for like a really standard late game build or a standard build at all is Slander on the Witch Doctor, who just picked up his Aghanim Scepter 30 minutes in. Slow, but you know, it's up. That's what matters. Viper going for a pretty early base build, the BKB pipe build, and of course Dagon maxed out, BKB on the Pugna. These are all early game builds. They're going to try to go for Roshan, but suddenly everything in the kitchen sink is going to be thrown into that pit. Pipe is going to hold up against that Ice Blast, and it seems like Unknown are okay with letting this Roshan go down slowly but surely because, well, the base of the Dire is going to be going down a little bit faster. He gets a five-man Static Storm as well as a Kinetic Field. That pretty much just shut down M5's Roshan attempt. They're going to TP one Axmo and the Queen of Pain. They get us another one. Oh, Bignum, he actually gets glimpsed back. And look how low he is. Kinetic Field going to keep him in place. Pure Evil wants to come in just to go for those shenanigans. Tombstone dropped. These two supports on Unknown, they're winning the game. 
for their team. Because Moscow 5, they can't even TP back, they're just so busy. Viper does get the Roshan, but Axmo, he gets hookshot. He can't even blink out because he gets um, stunned up by a rise. He manages to, to blink out at the last minute, but one Rax is down, two Rax is down. Oh my goodness. Basically unknown, their supports just won them those Raxes. Stoneman in what a freaking champion, man. The Static Storm, I missed that initially, but... Man, getting it onto that many heroes, first of all, that's big. Usually you say, oh, Static Storm, that's not going to do that much because there's no follow-up. But the fact that Moscow 5 were already trying to skate by Roshan by the skin of their teeth is huge because they don't really have the health or damage really to spare. Being distracted on these supports when they have such a weak Roshan lineup, unknown, they're tearing through the base all the while with maxed out Edict. And Moscow 5, the only person who is able to get back is Axmo. The glimpse back on the Undying was also crucial, so big plays from Stoneman, and of course Ice Blast from Pure Evil. It pretty much just runs itself, you just throw them into the pit, but for Unknown, those supports he said, that is going to give them a huge advantage in this game. Moscow 5 should be the ones taking Raxes right now. They're going to make a play out of almost desperation, it seems, but with everything being chucked towards them, ZXC Pulse Nova is active on him, and he's going to get obliterated. Where's your BKB now? Relaxing, get the cogs up in front of Axmo. He's an invis rune though. Dragon Blast to <laughs> snag AA. Then the TP out from Axmo. Glimpse, not available. And nor is anything else from the Lestrac or Clockwork. So Bignum actually gonna pop the tombstone and get in, but the Cardi blocking him out. Now he has to run the other way. Arise in the front line with Nico Baby. Gonna go straight towards Slander, who's channeling his Death War, doing quite a bit of damage. He will kill off the Lestrac, who actually commits suicide again a little bit early, it seems, but Nico Baby has stolen 168 damage. He'll go straight towards Limbo with it. There goes the Aegis. Now Bignum is on the run, does have a Glimmer Cape, will Glimmer himself out, but Kinetic Field Cogs, Limbo's not going anywhere anytime soon, here comes Axmo, looking to jump in, perhaps Dragon Blast into Relax, not quite gonna do it, Glimpse back from him, gonna cancel out his Blink, Nico Baby still with a little bit of damage left in the tank, one more hit's all they need, there it is, on the Queen of Pain, who literally just came back, now Bignum, he'll TP out, nothing to cancel that one, but it's a 4 for 1 on the side of BU, and look at bottom lane, Lestrac traveled down there, he's already pushing. I was, I was so amused by the cock block fight from Cardi. That was, as an undying and you want to try and get away, to have your own creep backstab you like that, it hurts. It really hurts. But the fact that Unknown was able to take the team fight so easily, it was because of what happened up in the top lane and the in the Roche pit. You have Stomach with a Aghanim Scepter with what we thought was going to arrive later. So with that item, it only shut down uh, only shut down Axmo on the Queen of Pain, but that was pretty much enough for Unknown attack. to just win the fight because that's one of their main damage sources, the Queen of Pain. There's not much damage aside from Queen of Pain and Witch Doctor, if you think about it, on the side of M5 Viper. He does some damage too, but he's not built for damage. He's built defensively for himself and his team, so Limbo is not going to be doing too much himself. So M5, the fact that they lost too many fights and also a set of Raxes, I feel like this is the point of no return, unless Unknown just throw bodies at them for free. Hey, and that's right. a GG call as well. Well, I didn't expect that to happen. I expected Unknown to actually have to work for it, but instead Moscow 5 just kind of give it to them. What nice guys, Moscow 5, and their pushing lineup, maybe if it had a little bit more pushing, maybe it actually got more pushing accomplished, that would have been their game. But instead, Unknown, they weather the storm and they get a little bit too big on both the Lashrac as well as that Razor. So basically Unknown gonna claim game one, guys. This is of course game one of a best of three, so we're not quite done yet. And this is gonna be again for third place from the RG 2 a Fest. Winner takes, I think that's about 1500 USD, 1300 Euro is what it is, or pretty much what it is. So not a bad chunk of change for right now. I'm Mike Lewis, I've been joined by Danny, and we'll both be right back for game two. Don't go anywhere, guys. <laughs> 